Hi there. I'm going to talk to you today about Bantam D1 forks. We're talking the early models, 1947-48, uh, I think this one is. Okay, this is the fork leg, and uh, this is a nice new stanchion, which you can, there's people making these again, uh, which fits inside. And this has two bushes in it. It has a bush, wrong end. It has a bush, that's where the grease nipple goes. It has a bush about here, and a bush in the end here, just a fossil branch bushes. Now then, these bushes can be very hard to remove, and it depends on what model, uh, well, what year. BSA seem to have used different um, ways of doing this, and from what I've read, some have a grub screw around here to help you remove the uh, inside one, or a grub screw here. Um, all I know is the ones I've got here um, are the awkward type, which are silver soldered in place. So we've got a bush here, silver soldered in place. We've got one this end. I'll just put that one into where it should be. Uh, about there, silver soldered in place. You can just about see that there. Now, how do we get silver solder out? Well, that's a very high temperature process. And I've been looking into this. And it, of all the wet ways um, suggested, of an intense heat in furnaces, which I haven't got, um, the best one seems to be brute force. So. You get your uh, fork leg in position, uh, hold it in a vice in soft jaws, and then you need a uh, hacksaw blade, just for blade, and you go in, out, in, out, in, out, and cut a slot in the old bush. So you're trying to cut a slot straight through here in the bush uh, that goes through the hole of a bush, hopefully not too deep into the fork leg, you want to just touch a fork leg, best if you leave a little bit, but it doesn't matter if there's a slight score, because it'll have a bush in afterwards. Then you turn it round and do another um, bit about a centimetre apart from that, and then possibly another one. So once you've got some slots in there to sort of, sort of break the uh, firmness of the, of the bush, I'm afraid then it's pure brute force. So at that point, you have your um, fork leg firmly mounted, and then with a hammer and chisel, yeah, seriously, hammer and chisel, you get your chisel, hold it in position, Use a screwdriver if you're a brute, um, and bash, 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 and try to get behind the bush, try to peel it off. Now, don't get disheartened, I nearly did. Um, at some points, it sort of scores the bush and won't quite come out, and it, it makes quite a mess, but eventually, you will get there. For example, um, here's one of the pieces I got out. You can see it's a slice of about a centimeter wide, divided by two slots. Once I got the screwdriver behind that, it helped get the rest out. Uh, and so I did manage to get that bush out. Now that means, excuse me, sit down here. That means that um, you can get that bush out of that side. Now there was some residual bits of bush, bits of silver solder in the end, not much. And so with a light bit of emery, just clean it out. I can get that nice and smooth. So the new bush, which are available, fits nicely in. Now we did consider with the, uh, the actual chrome stanchion part uh, getting these re-chromed. Uh, AM fill pot in Luton does a tremendous job. Um, I highly recommend them. I think about 130 quid for the two. But as we were doing the bushes as well, managed to get um, a supplier that's now making these again. And you get two bushes, the two bushes you need, and the stanchion. Uh, obviously you've got a pair of these for both sides. So that's the solution we went for. Um, but you can get these made up or buy them separately, get these re chromed that's up to you. Okay, back to the problem. I'd got the bottom bushes out, wrong end. I'd got the bottom bushes out. How do you get this one out of this end? Now remember, this took a lot of doing. It was um, hacksawing away down the end. It was um, beating up with chisels and God knows what. It's not easy. So how do you get the bottom one out? Well, I really struggled at an idea, uh, the idea of getting that out and read about it on the forums. And it was suggested by many people who've done this kind of job, including the people who sold these kits I just showed you for the uh, bushes and uh, stanchion, that you just leave it in place. So this bush, which is about here, if you just leave it in place there and slide the next bush down against it, there it goes, now, okay, your bush has moved down a bit, so there's less of a sort of mechanical, when it's in position, you know, mechanical um, leverage um, effects on, on the two bushes to give you a little bit more play. 
but it's my new not think it's going to be a problem uh, and so the bottom bush is there uh, sorry the the higher bush is there now if you then go to put the other bush in the one you've replaced what's to hold that in place so here you can see look on the end there there's a bush incidentally it was about the old ones were about four mil uh, i measured it almost exactly four millimeters sunk in uh, like you can see that one there but of course that's no good because it now falls out so how do you hold um that bush in place up there and this one here without resolving to silver soldering which i certainly wasn't going to do so another suggestion from the forums was to make a spacer of some kind and so what i got was some metal like this um, it's a bit of tubing which i bought on ebay i bought half a meter it cost me about six pound um, it's exactly the right size i can't remember what it is now i'll put it up on the screen down here so you can see it's just a bit too on ebay and it fits it's a really nice fit inside the tube as you can see look there you can see it's a really nice fit and of course also importantly it gives you the clearance over the stanchion so when that's running inside it it's not going to be um, scoring it so it's thin wall um, it, it does the job it's nice and strong but that's not um, the uh, whole solution because what I did first off was having got my bottom bush in position as you can see then put my nice new spacer in position then put the other bush in position and you'll notice again it's about four mil just as it was when i took it out there it is nicely in position but the trouble is of course that um there's nothing to hold it in position at all it all falls out and when you put the seal holder on the bottom the bottom seal can joggle up and down a bit so that first one was consigned to the oh, well i gave it a go and i got another one which is slightly longer which i made i mean i've got a lathe which means that it's easy to turn these but with a bit of care you can do it with a hacksaw and a, and a, and a plate and, and rub the end down on a, on a flat plate so then we have the system where i can now have bottom bush then that then that and as you can see that's nicely uh, flush on there and when you put the seal holder on that holds the seal in i've already checked this so it works perfectly that holds it in position that's nice now the other thing of course is uh, there is a grease nipple position as you can see here now that grease nipple position where's it gone the grease nipple here is to grease because there's no oil in these forks it's a grease based mechanism so you do need to grease these regularly but with a spacer in position obviously what's going to happen is the little hole there we are you can see it gets filled up with the uh, the spacer in the way so the solution to that was a nice little slot here we are a nice little slot i did it on a milling machine but just a hand drill will do now that little slot needs to line up with the grease nipple and of course when the grease nipple's in position it, it goes it protrudes through the actual fork leg a little and so that will actually hold that in position not mechanically hold it in position but it'll stop it from spinning so that the hole will always be lined up with the grease nipple and you can grease through nicely so that's these forks um, the job complete and just to show you what it looks like when it's inside there if i put my bush on there and this is the slider on there and then that other top bush there oops i've got that i've got that the wrong way around the hole is at the top the milled hole is at the top that's what it looks like when it's assembled in the actual uh, fork there's the little hole that lines up the grease nipple there's your two bushes as you'll see there's a fair distance between those two so i don't think that's a problem the fact that they're not lined up perfectly uh sorry not lined up in the same position as before and um, when you try it out it just feels nice and firm and is a much better job than the worn fork we had before so let's hope it works i know it will um all we need now get these bits off to the painters with the rest of the stuff and then we can start reassembling i hope you found that useful um, if you did find it useful please click like and why not subscribe to my channel there'll be plenty more bike related videos phantoms and much else appearing on this site so thank you very much for listening hope you've enjoyed bye